So like Anna mentioned, we have um, been busy going through and gathering a bunch of data. Uh, we have had, uh, so far we've looked at a demographic study, and that's kind of looking at how many students you've had in the past and how many you're projected to see in the near future. That really helps you with space programming and understanding um, the size of building you may need to serve your students and staff. Uh, we also have uh, done the listening se sessions, and that's stakeholder input, and that's what we're going to be one of the um, results that we're going to bring back tonight. And that's where, I don't know if, if you participated or not, We, it's okay, if you did, awesome. Um, you're here to, you know, find out what everybody said. If you didn't, that's okay. That It's, it's really just um, a way for us to get as much information and help the school board hear from different, um, kind of see through different lenses and perspectives on what the needs could be. Um, and then the third one that we did was an educational adequacy assessment, and that's really comparing your building to guidelines that are set forth if you were to build a new building. Um, and, and that's just kind of showing what today's learning environments look like because we know they've changed over the years um, so just kind of comparing them there's you know it's not saying you have to do it but it is a guideline to make you help you understand where you where you're at and those results will also bring back tonight and then finally we did a facility assessment um, and that's just looking at your deferred maintenance and the needs deficiencies within your building all these assessments the board, um, we always like to bring results back to the board first. Um, so they've seen these and, and um, they are really exploring and looking at how the results align. They're looking at commonalities to really help guide them through what is the best plan to preserve your facility and, and provide good learning environment for your community and students. All right, so with that, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna turn it over to Kirk. Uh, Kirk and Glenn were actually the two guys, I was just their sidekick, um, but they were, Glenn's not with us, but Kirk is, they were here actually facilitating our, our listening sessions, and he's gonna walk you through what those results look like. Hi. Um, I wonder if I can go over here, maybe, then I can, yeah, how's that? Um, my name is Kirk Ham. I am, uh, been with ICS for about a year and a half, and I'm a retired educator. I did a little bit of everything. I taught, I coached, I was principal, I was AD, and the last 15 years I was superintendent in Park River. And my school went through this process with this company about eight years ago, and um, really felt it to be beneficial and allowed us to base our decisions based on data rather than just what we thought and um, find commonalities amongst all our stakeholder groups and help drive what for us turned out to be a, a building project and renovation. So um, <clears throat> looking at this timeline, um, these are the dates that we, we met and we, we started meeting in I think we talked to Anna the first time in January at a conference and uh, that kind of got the ball rolling and we came out and met uh, with the school board and presented and then you can see the timeline there. Um, we did meet with all those individual groups including students uh, in late April and early May and then we also had um, two community groups. We had an in-person group which I think we had 38 people or 35 people there, something like that. It was, it was very well attended. And then we had a Zoom session, which was, uh, it was 20, I think. So really good uh, attendance and good participation. So that's kind of gives you an overview of where we, we were at uh, with our timeline. <clears throat> so we asked a series of questions and several of them we asked everybody and some we asked just certain groups. So. First question is, what are the great things happening in the Oaks School District? We asked everybody that. What are the challenges facing Oaks? Um, we asked uh, what the mission statement meant to them, and so they were able to respond to that. Um, what are great, your greatest facility needs? 
and uh, we'll go through all these uh, in a little bit and break it down by stakeholder. Um, we asked everybody but the board, what advice would you give the decision makers who are obviously in the school board as they work through this process? And then we asked the school board only, what are your expectations? What do you want to happen here? What do you think will happen here? Um, we asked the students, what, do you, what would you want for your younger siblings um, going through school that you didn't have? And so we got some, some good answers to that. And then the last question was just to the two community groups, how should we communicate with you? Okay, so those are the questions that we asked uh, on those series of listening sessions. <clears throat> so the first question is, what are the great things happening in the district? And so we break it down by, t by internal and external stakeholders, stakeholders. And so internal is everybody in the building or tied in the building, or tied to the district, I should say. So that's students, school board, teachers, ad administration, support staff. And then the external would be the community groups, people that are not in the building every day or on a regular basis. And, and I'm not going to read all of these, but um, if you see the internal, um, these were the these were the, the topics or the, the great things that showed up on more than one occasion on different lists. So, PCBL, the technology, excellent committee teachers, um, great staff. Um, you can see them. Uh, you know, you can read that for yourself. And then, if you look at the external, the community groups, um, the vocational center was a big piece for them. Um, community involvement, um, again, witnessed by the attendance at, at this session uh, we conducted in May. Um, the superintendent who's invested in the community, student involvement, engaged and respectful students, forward-thinking teachers, staff that cares for kids, great coaches. And so you can see some commonalities there. And as we get through this a little, while, uh, a little later, we'll, we'll kind of bring that to light. Um, we're looking for common, uh, common ground here. So, um, what are the challenges? Um, so you can see the top, and these aren't really in the order that was the most, uh, they, they appeared the most, but I will tell you, I remember distinctly that, that one was, for both groups, that was the number one challenge facing not only the Oak School District, pretty much every school district now, but um, finding teachers and retaining them, and finding creative ways to make that happen. Um, the internal group also mentioned the aging building, um, constant ed changes, new initiatives, student behavior, lack of subs. Again, that staffing issue, that's a concern. School board, hearing teacher voices, that was a concern there. Leadership team and board, money, burnout, so forth. The community group, um, felt parking was a big issue, and, and you'll see that appear multiple times later when we get into the facility type questions. Finances, which is certainly a concern all the time. Um, the facility, which you saw on, on really on both lists. Future security needs, um, need more room for the kitchen, more, more storage, and so forth. So those were the challenges um, as, uh, as listed by the external and internal stakeholders. <clears throat> so Oaks School District uh, mission statement is achieving excellence by educating all students for tomorrow's world. So we asked everybody, what does that mean to you? And we got a wide variety of answers. Um, but as you can see, um, as you go through this, it's kind of a different spin on a lot on the same theme, which is, you know, we want kids to be ready for the real world when they walk out our doors. We want them to be good people. Um, we want them to be lifelong learners. We want to get them ready for college. Preparing learnings for the changing world we live in. So a lot of the same things, and this, this slide is all internal. This is all everyone including students. This is what they said. You look at the external, not much different, to be honest with you, a lot of Providing a high quality education that prepares students for college and beyond. Um, providing academic instruction and life skills to ready them for the world, workforce, higher ed, military. Um, providing opportunities to develop well-rounded individuals. Really, everybody, I think, kind of wants the same thing when, you know, when students walk out the door. So, a lot of commonalities there. Um, so then we said, 
what advice would you give to the decision makers? What would you, what do you want the board to know? What do you want them to hear? And um, again, I'll, I'll go through some of these, but you'll be able to pick up pretty quickly what I think is a common theme on both of them. And so the internal group, support your staff and listen to them. Do what's best for kids now and into the future. Listen to teacher input, get input, listen to students, communicate. Take time to plan with people who use spaces each day. They're all kind of saying, listen to your stakeholders, listen to your staff, listen to your kids, let them be involved, okay? Externally, you know, if you look at that, um, it's really the same thing. You know, more public input, listen to patrons, use feedback, don't just collect it. Think long term. Ensure students have access to all educational need, consider teacher need. The commonality in all of that is people just, they want to be part of the process, right? They want their voice to be heard. So um, I think that's really valuable. And one thing, I just want to make one comment. So I made this comment last spring when we were here about the, the and, and you know, we only have so much room on there, but the teachers, when I was in one of the teacher groups, I think it was elementary, it doesn't really matter. But when we were talking about stuff like this, there were so many comments about do what's best for kids. We need, we need to do the best for our kids. We want to support them. We want them to be successful. And it wasn't about, you know, I want new windows in my room. I want, I was really impressed that there were so many, so many comments that really focused on kids. It's like, that's what it's supposed to be about. So I, I give the, the staff a lot of credit there. Um, so what are the school board's expectations going through this process? And this, I think this was everybody's list if I remember correctly, that was quite a while ago, but when we start this process, what does the board want, what do they want, what do they expect out of this, right? And pretty much most of them were looking for a long-term plan, right? Help bridge the gap between community and, and needs of school. To have a comprehensive and information-driven facilities plan to lead us into the future. And you can see most of these revolve around long-term planning. Let's have a long-term plan. Let's not be reactionary. Let's be proactive, right? Let's, let's uh, have a plan in place and so we're not worried, you know, while we're sitting in the gym and it's whatever temperature it is in here because the chiller's broke. I mean, those things happen. Um, but the board, I think the message to me was, let's be proactive. Let's have a plan in place so we can start working on some of these things. So we asked a question about um, what would you want for your younger siblings, okay? That might be a little hard for you to read, but um, so this was from the students and, and their number one choice was dedicated and quality teachers. I think that says a lot. Um, teachers that are long-term, student lounge, okay, that's probably the juniors that were ready to be seniors that really wanted that lounge, but, um, and you can see some of the other things, some of them, less important than the other, let's put it that way. But um, right to the top, dedicated and quality teachers and teachers that are gonna stay, okay? That's a good message from your young kids that they picked up on that. What's the best way for the district to communicate with you? So I made a little joke at the staff today that, um, you know, I was kind of surprised by this and I looked, the staff were all, you know, a third my age or you know whatever there and I go do you any of you even know what a newspaper is I don't think they do so anyway but um, so this is a message to the board you know how do they want you to communicate they want to they want to see it in the paper they want email they want another website um, social media is up there but not quite as high and, and you can read through those so <clears throat> I think this is great information for the board as they move forward with whatever, whatever they decide to do, um, they know how to communicate because this is what their patrons told them. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna look at is the facility question. And again, we're gonna break it down by, um, by the different groups. And when we get to the end of that, we're gonna kind of bring it around and show the connections and show the commonalities uh, amongst all the groups. Um, and you can see what kind of rose to the top. <coughs> so this was the school board. 
And if you remember the process or you're part of the process, um, members of whichever group came up with a, a need and then once that list was complete, then uh, everybody was allowed to vote for whatever, four, five, six, it just depends. And uh, so anyway, the three things that uh, rose to the top of the, the school board was kitchen size, um, the high school HVAC, and the plumbing, building wine. And as Anna can attest, there's certainly been issues with all of those things, um, probably for a while. Right below that, high school windows, um, the east entrance overhang, um, you're gonna see that on a lot of lists. The high school science floors, so when we did this, this was in April, and so that project had not been done. I think it just been authorized, actually. And so that part, you can, you can check that box for now um, because that part is completed. Um, and then you can read them as they go down. Um, but the pretty comprehensive list from the board which tells you they're engaged and they know what's going on. Um, the elementary staff, elementary teachers, <clears throat> Their number one choice, they needed more educational spaces. Dedicated reset room, which is um, becoming more and more common and actually needed in schools. Additional conference room space, which is another um, thing that, you know, 20 years ago, you really didn't need, you needed one little room. Now you need several, because you've got different people in your building every day needing to meet. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Storage. Um, again, outdated kitchen, too small, more teacher workroom space, which if I remember right, was pretty challenging on the elementary side. There wasn't much down there, not as much as the high school, more restrooms, better signage, and so forth. So those are the top choices or the top needs identified by your elementary teachers. So the high school teachers, um, temp control in the high school, um, the window situation, which we've already talked about. Parking, a um, little more relevant for high school because those kids drive. Um, not only, but it was not only for school, but for also events, as you can see. <clears throat> Need to relieve congestion in the hallways, update football and baseball, and so forth. Um, there's the east entrance overhang and icy sidewalk situation, and um, I think there's been a proposed solution to that, and it sounds like they're are on track to hopefully get that taken care of before winter. Um, so that's what the high school staff um, thought was the most important things. Support staff, and, and we had, I think we had um, some custodians and cooks and maybe para, I'm not sure. Um, it was a small group, but it was a tough time of year. It was right towards the uh, end of school. Anyway, they're their need or their identified needs was HVAC and that's they work with that every day custodians the sewer system again something that they're well aware of the east entrance overhang because they're out there trying to get that ice to melt um, windows again something that they're all very familiar with so um, as we're going through this list you're starting to see what's going to rise to the top I think so that would support staff students um, greatest facility, more parking, because they drive and they don't want to walk. Um, third floor concerns, again, something that has been rectified. Bigger lockers, um, and as I said earlier, I don't think they could possibly be smaller. I just don't think so. So that was an issue for them, more indoor space for athletics, locker room issues. I think that revolved around um, restrooms and some of those concerns. Athletic training room, which right now is being housed in a ITV room, I believe. HVAC, East Overhang, there it is. Plumbing, leaking roof, and so forth. So those are what the students thought were the most pressing facility needs. So when we look at all the internal groups and we kind of say, okay, well, what, what rose to the top? What, what did we see the most times? You know, what was some common themes? And, and these were the ones that kind of were um, on, on just about uh, all groups, if not all of them. So you can see the kitchen and the equipment issue, the east entrance, HVAC and temperature control, parking, sewer system plumbing issues, windows, third floor of the high school, and so forth. You can read all those. 
Um, so that was the internal group, right? That's the people that are in the buildings all the time. So we had we had two community groups, and this was the in-person group, and we said, what are the what are you, what do you perceive as the greatest facility needs? So they felt the high school roof um, was an issue, and I, and I don't know if we talked about that how old that is, but uh, I think that when this meeting <coughs> took place was when our roof was leaking, and we oh. had that fixed, but it was running down inside oh. of that. Okay, room, that's okay. So some of that's been rectified. Great. Okay, elementary septic system, which I know was a big issue a year or two ago. Uh, mechanical integrity, that's Bob's terms for uh, uh, what I think is probably HVAC and all the other things that, that revolve around that. Um, the science lab, you can see that shows up there. Parking, building envelopes, things such as tuck pointing, brick work, and um, um, things that need to be done in some of the exterior doors so forth. Anyway, so that's that's what the community, the in-person community group. The next group was the virtual meeting, um, and you can see that list. Parking for visitors, and shortage of special services space, which um, was a unique perspective from a community group, but very spot on. Aging facility, drop off and pick up area, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later. Plumbing, windows, and so forth. As you can read that going down, um, more storage for kitchen, so forth. So that was, um, that was the virtual group that we met with. Okay, so the external groups, again, we looked for common things, common themes. What, what showed up um, on, on both sets? So you can read through that, parking track, kitchen, plumbing, windows, a lot of the things that we saw on the internal group. And we'll, we'll show that comparison now. So, um, when we, we put it all together, we put the internal and we compare it to the external, what were the common themes? The words might be a little different, but they're really the same thing. So the kitchen equipment issue, that's what the internal people said, the external said we want a bigger and updated kitchen. Parking was an issue, certainly with both groups. The track facility showed up. Um, I believe the biggest concern there, the track is new, but the concession and restroom situation is not good. Um, so that showed up. The sewer system plumbing issues, you can see that. Basically the same wording almost from, from both groups. Um, the third floor in the science room, again, has been taken care of. Windows uh, was an issue. HVAC, temperature control, um, mechanical integrity was its partner in, in the external group, and so forth. So you can see that these are the top things that both groups felt were important. Questions? Anybody have any questions? Okay, so I'll turn it back over to Lori. adequacy assessment and, and kind of walk you through what that process looked like and what the results were of that. So educational adequacy is it's not how you're delivering uh, education, um, it's not a reflection of your staff, it is just evaluating your building footprint to compare it to the guidelines that are set forth uh, if you were to, to build new. Um, North Dakota doesn't have a printed uh, set of guidelines. They actually have adopted Minnesota guidelines. So if you were to um, you know, have an architect come in and, and lay out a building, they would be referencing Minnesota and, and the inspections would be you know, kind of based on the Minnesota. Um, so what we've done is we've broken down the guidelines that are set forth into 18 categorized categories. And, and then we walk through facilities and, and look at each one of those items that would make up that category and compare it to your building. And, and looking a lot like that square footage, daylighting, uh, technology, and things that you would be looking for if you were, or that you would be doing if you were to build today. So these are the 18 categories we explored. 
can go to the next slide. Uh, this is an example of category one. So category one is looking at your classroom and, and suitability of those classrooms. So they're saying in the, these guidelines, again, they're not mandatory, but they're guidelines. Um, if you have a, you know, classrooms, uh, general purpose is 850 to 950 square feet. Your kindergarten is going to be around 1,200 square feet to 1,500 square feet, and your early childhood is around 1,000 square feet. So that just gives you some parameters. Okay, what are we looking for if we, you know, in our spaces and compared to what, what do we have? Um, it's looking at storage and cabinetry, it's looking at daylighting, electrical outlets, uh, your whiteboards, and then your furniture. You know, what's your furniture look like today, uh, and how does that align with what the guidelines are? So as we're walking your facility, and we break it down from element, elementary to high school, because there are different requirements based on those spaces, and, and we put a code to it, or we color code it. And we do this because it, it's just a really great visual as you're thinking about, okay, what areas do we need to focus on and what areas are we doing really well in. Um, so we do a very simple red, yellow, green um, color chart. This has been very, very useful with uh, districts uh, for, for a long time, right? We keep kind of going back to this and this is something to remember. You might not remember that it has to be 950 square feet, but you can see are our classrooms meeting the guidelines or, or close to the guidelines. So if you're green, that means you are, you're doing really well in that category and you're meeting um, basically all of the guidelines um, for the most part. If it's yellow, this is where you're, okay, you might meet some of the guidelines, but not all of them. Um, it doesn't mean it's bad, it's just you're not quite meeting it uh, 100%. So we give it a yellow. And then the red, that's where you're, you know, inadequate and, and really not meeting guidelines. And that would be a really good indication, like, this is what you should be looking at as you put your long-term plan together. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through the elementary results. And then, and I don't know if it's easier if I stand here or here. Maybe it's better over here. Um, I'll walk you through the elementary, and then Kirk will walk you through the high school. So these are the results of your district, and these are the 18 categories that we mentioned, and this is reflecting the elementary. So looking at your classroom size and suitability, you have a green. Um, so you're doing a nice job. Those classrooms are sized um, adequately. You have very nice daylight. Uh, you have those nice big windows. You have um, cabinetry in there. You have uh, electrical outlets. Now, this is not looking at deferred maintenance, so it's not saying, are your cabinets in really good condition? It's looking at what kind of cabinetry storage space you have. Um, our facility assessment, that's where you look at what's the condition of that space. So just kind of keep that in mind as, um, as we are walking the building, that's what we're looking at. Category number two is your cafeteria, kitchen, kitchen and serving area. Uh, typically, uh, a, cafe a kitchen area and serving, including a storage and freezer, would be around 3,000. Uh, larger schools would probably be 7,500 square feet. You currently, I think you're around like 550 square feet in your kitchen. Um, you do have a, a storage area and a freezer that's another 300 square feet, and then just a hallway that would be utilized for serving. Uh, so, so very undersized on the kitchen aspect, and then in your cafeteria, uh, they average between 12 to 14 square feet per student. Um, and depending on how many students you have per lunch hour is how you can size it, your cafeteria. You actually have quite a bit of space in your cafeteria, um, but with the, with the um, small kitchen, this category got a red. Security and supervision. This, um, this is where, you know, how you enter your building, where is the, is there, are the doors locked? You do have uh, fobs, so you have to key in to get into your building. You have a new, very nice uh, office area, um, but what you don't have is that, that entrance, the secured entrance that you lock in. It is locked and you have to buzz in, 
But once you get in the building, visitors are free to go anywhere before they actually walk into the office. So really they want, um, if you're looking at the guidelines, again, this is not mandatory, but what they want is for you to be contained, to be checked into the office before you can wander around and, and go where you need to go. That's the main reason that that, that one got a red. The main office nurses and support staff, that's in that same area, a beautiful addition you guys did in 2015. It's, it's a great space. You have nice office areas, you have a nice nurses station, and, um, and the support space that you need. So that one got a green. Category five and six, this is your science and art classrooms. For your elementary, it really doesn't apply. Uh, generally, that um, takes place within your classroom. So that's why we give it an, an A. That curve will go through in the high school, how that's relative in looking at the high school classes and middle school. Category seven is your music classroom and practice areas. This is just located in a classroom. So the size, the, the space is undersized. It has the lower ceiling. You don't have any uh, tiered, uh, uh, like for your music spaces, you, you know, it's all one level, so you don't have the tiered pieces. And, and that is what gives you a red. You also have um, some of your older elementary kids that are doing band. That doesn't take place in this classroom. They actually walk down to the, the middle school, high school, um, but yet put their storage in that space. So it is definitely undersized for that need. And that one got a red. Uh, category eight is your staff lounge and collaboration area. So you do have decent space. Um, as far as you have a bathroom within your, your staff lounge, you have some, some tables. You don't have any real collaboration space. You go down the hallway, go around, there's a separate spot where you do have a copier and some storage. So just, you know, really the guidelines would be looking at putting all that together so you have a good space for your, your staff as they um, are in between classes and preparing for the next class. Uh, category nine is student comments and breakout. This is a red because there isn't any. So in today's uh, teaching and learning, it's very common that there is collaboration or breakout space, what they would call it, uh, for students of all ages, not just the older students, uh, even elementary. A good way for them to, to break out into small group settings and, and have a different way of learning. So that is not, um, you do not have that, so that one we gave our red. Uh, 10 is your, your um, gym space and athletic areas. The students for your elementary, they use um, the South Gym, and it's a great size gym. It meets the needs, and, and that is why it got a green in it. So you're doing well with that. Um, and category 11 is site suitability. Your field green space, um, you have a beautiful playground. You have nice turf, you have basketball areas. It is not ADA compliant, unfortunately, on your playgrounds that have some wood chips. Um, and then you don't have a big green space for, you know, if you're going to have PE and they want to play kickball, you don't have a space for that. They actually have to walk down the, down the street and they can utilize the football field area for green space. So with that, um, it is undersized, so the space you do have is in good condition. But it still did get a red just because of the size of that. Category 12 is your parking bus drop-off. Um, areas in your, for your students and parents. Um, the bus drop-off is on the north side and the sta uh, student parent drop-off is on the south. So you guys are doing a nice job of separating those space for safety and security. Um, you have a parking lot on the south along with uh, a small parking lot on the east. And, and so you do have some uh, parking spaces but it's, it is undersized for what you would um, be looking at if you were to look at the guidelines. And, and so that one got a yellow. So you're doing, doing a nice job in some areas, just a little bit undersized in other areas. Your technology, you're one-to-one. -one, so you're doing, you, that one's a green. And then your library and media center. Um, that's that beautiful library that you guys added and added on to and renovated in 2015. Great space, um, great location. And, and so that one got, got a green. Category 15 is your 
special ed and support services. This category got a, a yellow. Um, you, you have night seats. Uh, they did some renovations to, to have some different small group spaces, uh, which are nice. A couple areas do not have any daylight. Uh, the bathroom in that space is not ADA compliant. And then there is a little bit of spread out, you know, they're spread across the hallway to some other areas. So not really having a dedicated suite where all the students would be together. So you're doing a great job, but you know, there's some things that don't quite line up with what today's guidelines are. So that kind of yellow, um, but you're still doing a really nice job on that space. Category 16 and 17. 16 is your auditorium, and 17 is a career in tech education. Usually, uh, elementary schools don't have these, these um, areas, so again, this is, doesn't apply to the elementary, and Kirk will talk about it in the high school. And then finally, category 18 is looking at your hallways, your lockers, your washrooms, the maintenance spaces. Um, you have beautiful lockers for the students, you have nice big hallways. Um, but when it looks, when you're looking at your bathrooms, you do have a lot of ADA compliance um, areas that do ADA compliance. So that's how we ended up with a yellow on that space. Any questions on the elementary before I hand it over to Kirk to go through the high school? Okay. Okay, got my glasses. I'm good to go. All right. Yeah. Well, you guys that don't have them, they're coming. Just, just wait. It's going to happen. So, um, taking a look at um, starting with classroom size. And so, um, the, the typical high school classroom is recommended to be 850 to 950 square feet. The classrooms in the high school are woefully short of that. Um, most of them were six to seven hundred square feet, which, um, you know, Laura and I walked around again just right before we or this meeting and looked at it again and it's like, um, you put 20 kids in a room that size, it's pretty tough. And, and then have a teacher move around and so forth. So um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of issues there. So that was really a red right out of the chute just because of the lack of size. Um, Cafeteria, it's the same as the elementary, so we've already talked about that. Same with security, and same with the main office. Uh, the science classrooms, number five, and labs was red, um, because at the time, it was definitely a red. You know, it needed some work. Um, now the work's been done. Um, my gut would say it'd probably be yellow now, just because they're smaller than they, than they should be. Um, but we, we just walked through them as well, and, and certainly a much a much better atmosphere than it was because the last time I saw them, they didn't even have lab tables in there, so those are in there now and so forth. So, um, so that's why that was a red. Uh, the art classroom um, looks like it was basically a classroom that was turned into an art room, and uh, it's really it's way too small. Um, there's no ventilation. Um, there are some sinks in there, um, but it's just, it's just so small um, for what you need to do um, big art projects. Um, the music classroom um, was really close to being green. We, um, we, we had a fair amount of discussion on that. Um, the biggest kind of uh, um, uh, you know, dig on it, I guess, is that it's a little undersized for band. Um, and again, you know, I don't know how many kids you have in band, and so it's probably pretty adequate. But again, we're comparing to the standards. We're not saying, um, you know, we're not measuring how it works exactly for you. Only you guys know that. But we're just comparing it to the standards. And the ceilings were a little low. The one thing I did notice was the storage was pretty limited in there. Um, there was stuff everywhere and that's not a that's not a shot at anybody that's just the reality because there was no room to put a lot of that stuff so um, that's why that was the um, 
the staff lounge collaborative areas was green because there was plenty of it and um, one of the larger spaces up there in the high school actually so um, that was a pretty easy green because it was very um, very large and it had what staff needs and it had tables and it had um, I believe a fridge and I think there was a copier in there so it was all uh, it, that was an easy green staff comps and breakout areas again um, there isn't one and so that's why that was a red um, a lot of times as Lori mentioned in, when new construction or renovation um, schools are creating flex space areas or, or collaboration areas where you can take 10 kids or 8 kids or 15 kids and, and work with them in a small group um, so it, it was a red because it doesn't exist um, so the PE and the athletics part, um, the, the high school gym is slightly undersized, but I'm sure you would tell me, and I would probably agree with you, that it's plenty big, right? It works for you. Some of the things that um, probably brought it to a yellow is there's no divider curtain in, in there, so you, you have one educational space rather than being able to separate it. Um, the other parts, the locker rooms, are not ADA compliant. Um, they need some work. And um, so, so that, that's what made the yellow. It was probably, it, it's, it's adequate. I'm sure you're going to say that it's adequate for you, but it does not meet the standards in some of those areas. Um, the site suitability is just what Lori talked about. It's the same site. Um, there's really no green space. Um, the other part about physical education, again, you know, if you want to play soccer, I got to march the kids over the football field, and versus having a spot on site. Um, the parking, we talked about that. That was the same as the elementary. Technology in the library media center. It's the same space, so it's the same color. Um, special education is a different space, but it's also yellow for a lot of the same reasons Lori talked about. Um, there's some lack of natural light in there. Um, there's a bathroom, but you have to enter it from the hallway, and it's a bathroom with a shower, which is great, but it, it would make more sense, I think, and be more friendly to special needs kids if you could enter from the hallway there. Um, the auditorium performing arts space, so like 95% of schools the size of Oaks, right? You have a stage and a gym, right? That's where you have it, because that's that's functional, that makes good sense. Um, it is not a performing arts center. Um, does it work for Oaks? I bet it does, you know. Uh, and I made a comment earlier today, I have never in my life seen a stage that large. I will just tell you that. That's, that's like three stages in a lot of schools. But, um, you know, it's still at the end of the day, it's a gym, right? And, and the guidelines say, Performing Arts Center, you know, is de designed with acoustics in mind and things like that. Um, and a gym is not a Performing Arts Center. So that was a yellow. Does it work for you? I bet it works great. Um, so the Career and Tech Ed piece, uh, wow, what a great facility. And I told the teachers today, you guys are so lucky to not only have that, but have it in your town. So your kid's got a two minute bus ride and you don't have to play that game like in my school where we bus kids 15 miles and so you lose a period on one end and a period on the other end and um, but no great facility that shop I don't know if I've ever seen a shop in a current tech center that size in my life I had a hard time measuring it because it was just it was crazy so beautiful space um, I think the one concern that the board has talked about is maybe upgrading the bathrooms renovating them um, at some point in time but that's certainly not critical great space um, the hallways, lockers, washrooms, so forth in the high school. So the hallways are a little undersized. Um, the lockers are unbelievably undersized. Um, the bathrooms, there is no ADA compliant bathroom in there. Um, the second floor does not have a student bathroom at all. Um, it would be a real problem if you had a wheelchair kid because they all have steps. Not yeah, so not only do they not have an ADA stall or anything, they have steps going up there. So that's really 
that makes that a rent pretty quick. So, um, so that's an overview of the high school. And so we're certainly not going to go through this again, but this is just a comparison when you put the elementary beside the high school and look at the colors and see um, that a lot of spaces have similarities, a few have differences, um, but that's what that looks like. So with that, um, that's our presentation, so I would ask if anybody has any questions. No questions. Well, if there's no other questions, um, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. I appreciate it. It must have been so good that the staff wanted to see it again. So, Laurie, good job. Way to go. So, um, but thank you. And uh, we'll, uh, this is available how? You know, if they want to, if somebody wants to access it, it'll be on your website? Yep, we'll have it posted on the website tomorrow, and if anybody wants to go up and see the spaces that we're talking about or walk through it and yep. feel what it's like without air conditioning, it's open. So, okay. All right. Thank you.